Chandler here, president of Off-Road Warehouse and part-time Off-Road Racer. Here at ORW, we're not just your typical off-road shop. We sell race parts. Come check it out. We sell everything from FK rod ends, Bregola, PCI radios, and we're even selling direct BF Goodrich racing tires. Check out any one of our 10 off-road warehouse locations. Get you dialed in for going down to Baja or anywhere else you play. Sure, everything's made of something. The time and sweat is what puts it together. And it's that relentless application of effort against the clock that created everything around us. The BF Goodrich HD Terrain Tire is engineered to tackle the extreme situations heavy duty trucks are met with head on. Because downtime can't exist when there's a job to do. Time isn't something to marvel at. It's something to be seized. It's a tool we put firmly in your hands. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Fistgistics 2024 kickoff. That's right, it's time for the first score race of the year, the San Felipe 250. My name is Cameron Steele. I will be your host, which I've been hosting Fishgistics now, well, for as long as Fishgistics has been along. And if we're going to talk about fish, we may as well introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, the infamous Austin Farner, also known as Fish and the owner of Fishgistics. Hi, buddy. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? You ready to have some uh, fun once again? I am. Anytime we're talking about making dust in Baja, it's a great thing. And for me, uh, I am entering... Well, I'm not exactly sure how you add this up, but way back in 1985, I started driving uh, race cars in SCORE. So if I'm not mistaken, that makes this my 40th year as a driver in the SCORE series. And speaking yeah. of SCORE, let's bring in the kingpin. I saw you raise those eyebrows when I said that, Jose G. That's right. I'm not 35 anymore, damn it. Uh, Jose G, uh, the boss at SCORE, the man that makes it all happen. He's a good time. He's a fair operator, and he comes up with some amazing race courses. Jose G, welcome to Fishgistics here in 2024. No, no, thank you for uh, for having me on the program. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to have the man with the plan in the house with us so we can all talk about what's really going on. And while we're talking about what's really going on, what is really happening here? It is opinion. We can't give you all the exact facts, but we can try to give you information where you can make your own decisions on. Uh, you've got to do your own research, your own planning, your own pre-running, but we will give you what we can to try to help you along. But again, it is opinion-based. This is my release of liability if you're watching this show. And uh, is that fair, Jose G? You like that? We, we kind of think we're know-it-alls, but not everything's going to be perfect. That's totally true, senor. I think, I don't know, Jose, or, I mean, I think when Jose says something, it's usually pretty more true than when you say something on here, Cameron. Well, I've always learned as after being a television commentator, I started my TV commentating uh, life in 1998. Uh, so I've always heard you never let the truth get in the way of a good story. So if we can run a little BS, tell a little story time, it's always makes people smile. And I think that's okay. I'm not going to worry too much about it. But hey, the number <laughs> one thing is trying to give enough information to keep people educated, safe, uh, able to kind of figure out some of the logistics of it all. But again, you have to do it all for yourself. Jose G, what year for the San Felipe 250 is this? It's the 37th uh, running of the San Felipe race. Now that's a pretty amazing stat. San Felipe is such a beautiful little seaside town. For those of you that haven't been there, it's a fishing village, so to speak, that has blown up and grown up over the years. Uh, still... Although there's been a lot of fishing restrictions and uh, catching restrictions, it's still kind of uh, hubbed along uh, the seafood culture, so to speak, but also a great launch point uh, for off-road racing and off-roading. 
fish. This has got to be one of my favorite spots. I'm sure it's one of yours as well. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong going to San Felipe, right? I mean, it's always exciting. It's a good way to start off the year. Everybody has a, a fresh vehicle for the most part, and it, it's a short race, and it's going to be fast, fast this year. So uh, probably the fastest San Felipe ever. Uh, so it's going to be fast. <laughs> so what you're saying is you think the course is fast, Fish? It's it's going to be a little bit higher speed this year. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about this. We're talking about a race course uh, that has seen quite a bit of abuse over the years, but we have been running some different lines, letting the desert recover itself, but also letting the rain come down and, and create more cross grain or rain ruts. Um, the other question is, has there been tractor work done? Uh, San Felipe traditionally, uh, the way the race course is running this particular time, uh, over the years, you would talk about how it was a straight whoop section all the way to Highway 3 which we're going to talk about here. We're back on that traditional course, correct, Jose G? Yeah, yeah, and, and it's not going to let you down. It's all whoops from the start to El Chinero. So. <laughs> <laughs> no tractor. Copy. Yeah, Cameron no likes the whoops, right? Cameron, you wanted <laughs> you wanted a lot of whoops. So I'm in for it. I'm in yeah. for it. <laughs> what about what about qualifying, though? Maybe talk about that, Jose G. There is qualifying this race and every race this year, right? That's something new. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and uh, it's in a different location. Uh, it it and we are qualifying now for every single race, so that that should make our our racers happy. That if they have a bad race, they're not uh, jinx or they're not screwed for going to the next race, starting in the back. So so uh, they still have to race all of them in order for, so so that they can qualify for all of them, of course. But uh, I think it's it's a plus for them uh, uh, this year. We're gonna, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be happy. Yeah, so okay, just so to, just to clarify that real quick, if you want to qualify at any race this year, you have to have raced the previous race in order to qualify. If you didn't race the previous race, you'll just start behind everybody who qualifies that did race, right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, the San Felipe, you, you're gonna you're, you're gonna you're gonna qualify, and then after San Felipe, of course, you go on you go on to the Baja 500, and. If you want to qualify, you've had to race San Felipe. Same thing for the 400. If you want to, if you want to qualify, you have to race the, the the 500. If you want, to, if you just pretty much, if you just want to do the 1,000, you're going to start behind the ones that race the 400. Okay. And now, uh, racing the 400 means you started the race. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's my here's my request. Let's try to qualify in places that are a little bit more level playing field for the two wheel drive and all wheel drive. And also, I know it sounds like a stupid question, but can we just have 200 yards of rolling start before the timing starts? You can still have the arch, right? You can still have the arch where we start, but don't start the timing for 200 yards. That way, the initial acceleration of the all-wheel drive doesn't outpace the two-wheel drive. It's a, We're getting to up to speed. I agree that all-wheel drives are amazing, and every all-wheel drive – Driver that's watching this, we love you. You are the very best driver and team and truck there is on the planet. I acquiesce. You are the best. But I'm asking, give us a little bit of run in, right? My <laughs> race engineer, Mike Kraft at FIDAC says, why the hell not give us a little bit of run in? I mean, let's get, let's level the playing field a little bit. But that's okay. If they all start in front of us, we're still going to finish in front so, of them. How's that? How, how, many beer, how many beers are we talking about? As many beers as you want. I'm all in. Let's do it. Whatever it takes. But uh, I'm just saying a little bit of a run in, you know, let's make it, you know, let's level it out a little bit. Because that first acceleration is a killer. That zero to zero to 50 miles an hour is a real tough one on the two wheel drive. So, and, and I have another question. I know there was talk about splitting the classes. Score is not splitting the classes. Is that correct? No. How can you split up an unlimited class? Thank yeah, you. Do you have like <laughs> unlimited, unlimited plus, uh, like a light phone, <laughs> unlimited plus, I don't know. No, 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 it's an unlimited. That's I was going to say, if you're going to split them up, you're going to have to give us the trophy for all the two-wheel drive wins over the last few years. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that, so, no, we're, we're not splitting them. It's yeah. an unlimited class. It's, it's, there's, no, there's nothing bigger than that. Uh, so, uh, race against the big boys. I hear there you. Go. Let's. Let's make let's have the legend start behind the big boys. That's all I'm saying next, but we'll go from there. Uh, 
Maybe we digress. <laughs> right, R Zero sending me a question. Hey, by the way, anybody in fishistics world on the interwebs, if you have a question right now while we're live, you can text it to myself or fish or Jose G, or more importantly, just comment on the thread on Fishistics Facebook, right? You're watching that fish? I am. I'm watching it. Alan Ampudia says, let's do it. <laughs> there we go. Let's do it. Yeah, Ampudia. <laughs> see, Ampudia's up for a fair fight. They're my monster teammates, so they want to see me be the best I can be, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. We're celebrating 40 years of racing in this circus, Jose G. Come on, give us a little bit of love over here. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I'll guarantee you we're going to give you that uh... – we're gonna we're, we're gonna go ahead and do and uh and give you a good start for the for for qualifying, all right? Thank you. There you go. That's you gotta something. check it off your list, Cameron. Your complain list. I, hey, out. so yeah, someone was saying that I complain online, but I'm just <laughs> saying I'm bitching for the right to be on a more level playing field. I I have a seven hundred thousand dollar truck, not a one point two million dollar truck. Only <laughs> the back wheels turn on it, but she's bad. She's my geyser, baby. I came in here pumped up. I'm ready for this year to to fight it out and have some fun. And uh, I'm just battling for what it is I think is right. So if you don't like it, kiss my patootie. <laughs> How about that? All right. I like that, it. We got some excitement to start the show. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about excitement because the one, thing, right. I wanna, one thing I want to cover about San Felipe is holy – SHIT, there is a lot going on in a small compact area, right? It's 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 the hub of off-roading in San Felipe. There are a lot of racers. How many teams are entered now, Jose G? Like one million? Yeah, no, close to 250 right now. Okay. I noticed that everybody was having a dog fight on their social media about how many teams have entered the races so far. Okay. Uh so there's a lot of racers. There's a lot of chasers. When you go to Baja, there's a lot of chase trucks. There's people going different directions, all kinds of things. There are a lot of spectators. Everybody from San Felipe, everybody from the Mexicali area, the Ensenada area. Like I said, you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere in the desert, but this is the hub for off-roading. Everybody, tell your team, put your senses together, understand there's a lot of people everywhere. If you think it's a bad idea, it probably is. Check the brakes a little bit and don't act like a monkey. Okay, fair. All right, all right. Let's talk about. You want to talk about the race course? Yeah, yeah. Let's bring it up. Let me see where uh, where it is here. Here we what go. What about you, Jose G? Are you are you done talking smack yet? Are you want to you want to throw back a little bit? No, no, no. I love you, Senor. So go ahead. Let's talk about the race course. There we go. All right. So what time? What time are they? Uh, are they starting, Jose? The, the motorcycles are going to start at six and the, the four wheel classes are going to, the first trophy truck is going to start at nine. Okay. So three hours, you got three hours between them uh, starting this year and yeah, two, we're going to do a half. separate course. And the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My questions I'm getting is Mike Kraft says, make sure it's a rolling start. And Phil Burton <laughs> says, when do the UTVs get to start uh, qualifying? Well, the first one I already committed on it. So it's happening. So, gotcha. Uh, uh, let, let, let's uh, let's start working on the UTVs. If they want to do it, we can totally work it out. There okay, go. sounds good. Anyway, the I know you're talking about times that they're starting. Uh, first of all, let's say we are starting in downtown San Felipe on the Malacon. Is that correct? That's where the GPS file starts. Uh, we're back in downtown starting, correct? That's correct. Yeah. And the motorcycles will start at what time? Six in the morning. Copy. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. When the sun's coming up, traditional yeah. score, early starting time for dirt bikes. And what time will the four-wheel vehicle start? Nine. Nine o'clock. Okay, beauty. Uh, so the race course, you, you guys, this, for the, those of you that haven't been or aren't super familiar, this is downtown San Felipe, directly towards the water uh, from the arch, more or less. Uh, the arch is the gateway or the entryway into San Felipe. You will see it there. As you come into town, uh, surrounded by desert, we will leave town southbound towards the sand dunes. And uh, say that again. 37 miles an hour off the start. 37 off the start. Then it's going to then we're going to race through the sand dunes. Is that correct, Jose G? Yep, that's correct. As soon as you hit the sand dunes, that where, that's where the speed zone ends. Yeah, right here. Perfect. Yep. That'll be some that'll be some good spectating right there at the start. Yeah, and there's going to be two big jumps actually in in, in on the dunes. They're already getting built right now. 
All right. Awesome. Mike Kraft and Heli Jim say that you guys should be uh, building spectator zones in every city with a controlled area and jump so everybody can see the race trucks in a safe and sane manner. Anyway, wanted to let you know that that was something that they also brought up. Racing through the sand dunes, that's going to bring Mexico. you into – say that again, Jose G? In Mexico, us Mexicans are a bit uh, different. Uh, if you tell them where to go, we'll go – totally in a different place so uh it's been like that forever so hope we we could have spectator areas but we can't close the desert for no i understand no we don't want you to close the desert everybody be safe though so two big jumps at the bottom of the sand dunes or somewhere in that area yep punk rock i love it uh you're gonna go under a tunnel under the highway five that's headed southbound and into the outskirts of town uh, I just wanted to mention everybody that, uh, there's a lot of pre-running that goes on. This is a two-way section. Uh, I'm assuming there's no pre-running on this section, Jose G. Yeah, we have a note there that only outbound pre-running is allowed. So, uh, when you get to that point where, where the course is joined, uh, there's no inbound uh, pre-running at all. So you so have you... to hundred percent avoid an accident. Right. So when you get to the, uh, inbound course, uh, at it looks like if my eyes are correct, VCP 131 is that correct? You're gonna yes. not go inbound on that, you're gonna turn off and go into town on the access road at a safe and sane speed. Correct, uh, that's where the course splits onto the outbound. Remember, there's gonna be a lot of spectators, people watching, people around. Uh, beware in your pre running, also beware in your racing. Uh, the, the course could have live uh, vehicles. Could have spectators very close, could have animals, uh, lots of stuff going on. Uh, racing through the outskirts of San Felipe, you'll see you uh, go through um, some gridded areas there. Uh, you're going to start zigzagging back and forth along the back of San Felipe. There are some there are some fence posts, some barbed wire, a couple little things along the way. Pay attention as you're making those tight turns. Are you laughing, Jose G? No, no, no. Uh, this section right here, I think it's pretty fun. You guys have created over the last couple of years, a little bit of uh, soft stuff, a little bit of zigzagging back and forth. I see it looks like a little bit more VCPs maybe than have been there in the past or whatever, but it's a, it's a good time racing through there. Soft cross grain uh, back and forth. That's going to bring you back to traditional, what many people call zoo road, but Jose G, that's really not correct. The zoo road is the main road that it crosses. If I'm not mistaken, there used to be a zoo in San Felipe, and that was the road that led to it. Uh, but it became known as Zoo Road because also because of all the spectators and how crazy it used to be out there. Yeah, that, that, that's totally correct. That 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 the all the locals and how we call it, it's a dump road. Dump road. Uh, so that's underneath the power poles, correct? We're racing up through the power poles through traditional whoops. We're going to cross the dump road or the zoo road or, or well, actually we'll be on the dump road. We'll cross the zoo road, which is now paved. That's a speed control zone, correct? Yeah, yeah. you know how crazy it gets with all the spectators. So we just right before the, the, the pavement and right after the pavement, we just have a, a, a small speed zone just for safety. Um, copy that. Now, will the the access road there, will that be open to go out to pitting? on the back side of the race course or where the race course intersects it again? It, it'll be open and our, our staff will let the chase people know when it's safe to cross. I had an idea. I don't know if you could ever implement, implement it, but you could make it one way in the morning and the other way in the afternoon if you wanted to eliminate some of that two-way oncoming traffic. But I don't know how you would exactly uh, make that happen. And I'm not saying that's happening. I'm just saying I, I had that idea at one point. So I wanted to share that with you while I was thinking about it. Good luck trying to stop all those people from going the other way, right? <laughs> right. Uh, well, it only takes a couple of cop cars and they pay attention. <laughs> uh, out past race mile 15, you're still in the bumps. Uh, you're going to get to what is uh, traditionally uh, where the VCP 14 is. That's the right turn that heads along uh, the top line of the whoops there. There's been a couple different ways you guys have done it in the past, but am I correct that this is on the more traditional route? Yeah, that, that's the most traditional route we've ever done. And we left it like in between. There's not a lot of BCPs so that we, we left some 
So uh, at least in that that area, uh, it's more open. We left some some good passing zones, and uh, so that you're not just worried about uh, hitting a BCP in straight away. We like when you leave some opportunities to make some passing. Some of us don't like when you mark the fastest line on the race course, but I know that you're studying some of the GPSs and <laughs> trying to level the playing field. I understand. Uh, across this uh, section up here, you can see the uh, some of the dangers start coming in that score has marked, but you can see the flow on the on the Google Earth here, how the water flows. Anytime the water's flowing from left to right on the race course, that creates cross grain, arroyos, canyons, sand washes, uh, ledges, dips, and all kinds of stuff like that. So pay attention in this area. Uh, I'm not sure how much rain San Felipe has gotten. Uh, Jose G, how's it looked down there? Is it has there been a a bit of rain with all the rain that came through up here? Yeah, they they, they got some rain, especially up north. Uh, when when Nate and I were mapping, uh, the section going north uh from Saldana, they were, we we couldn't make it across the first time. It was it was I mean we barely got out. It was so muddy. Yeah, well, you, you don't want to get out on those lake beds when they're muddy. I've seen some pretty yeah. good sites over the years. Uh, but be cautious. If it looks wet, let your friends go first. That's the way I always do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hide off the side in the bushes somewhere and then see if they make it across. <laughs> uh, we're starting, uh, we're getting into what, uh, probably around race mile, tw what is this, 27 or something like that? Uh, make yeah, right about 27 left oh, turn next to the highway this is a speed control zone you're going to actually be right against the side of the highway uh there will be uh, obviously uh people controlling the area but uh we get right up alongside the highway so another speed zone there and that that then comes into what i think is one of the most tricky parts of the san felipe race course because there are so many intersecting lines there are so many big holes and it seems like there's so many different ways to go through there jose g Every time I go through there, I feel like, man, I think I could do that even a little bit better next time. It feels like you could just maybe pre-run that section for days on end, that, just that little five miles. Yeah, but it changes all the time. You, you you have one line, you think it's the best one, and then the other one looks better. So you never know. Grass is always greener. Yeah. It looks pretty pretty open through here, too. It looks like there's only one VCP right here for that whole section. So that's a lot of, uh, a lot of lines through there. Yeah, we're trying to keep the BCPs like on when when we cross like major roads or, or graded roads, so that it's more controlled where you're passing it, and uh, our staff makes it safer. That that's pretty much what we're doing right now. VCP nineteen, there a traditional area where there's a access road that can come in there or used to come in. I don't know if that fence is open or not. Do you know if it's open or not, Jose G? You know, I don't know if it's open. Uh, I haven't gone out on that access road uh, in in a long time copy and this will take you uh towards the area traditionally known as three poles we used to race closer to the highway i know we talked about this in in other shows about san felipe but over the years the race course kept kind of coming left and left and left people kept making a more direct line and have eliminated that wash uh for the most part in that direction from three poles but that was a good legendary uh iconic marker from when we were a bit younger uh, that's going to take you up to Highway 3. This is the road that goes from Ensenada to Highway 5. Um, there's going to be a speed zone going into this. There will be a ton of people. Uh, so heads up as you cross the road. Uh, that's going to start heading you towards El Chinero. Uh, we're going to get underneath the poles here, and between the poles, actually, Jose G. Well, it's it's actually marked, and there's one BCP there. It's, it is marked on the left. I mean, you can still work your way to the pole line, but the, and you know, you know how it gets with all the spectators. So that, that's why that BCP is there. Oh, know. so it is, it is not on the pole line. Not on the pole line road. Okay. Copy. That, so there it is. is. I see the BCP there in the middle of the cross grain fun section. There's, there's at least one or two big kickers in there that can surprise yeah. you. Pay attention. Yeah. You can see uh, the poles so. over here on the right. So this is the poles you were talking about, Cameron. That's ah, gotcha. Part. Yeah. Gotcha. My bad. For some reason, I thought it was marked the other way around. So I I surrender. Good job drinking all the water, Jose G, by the way. It's good for you. Uh, that's going to take us up towards El Chinero. Any ch any real changes in the course in here uh, on this left line or going around some of those? I know a few years back they rebuilt some of those uh, dike areas uh, for the water flow coming out of the Royals going into the highway, but doesn't doesn't really uh, affect any of the race course other than you get – 
alongside of it. Seems like it turned up a few more rocks in there over the last couple of years. Yeah, but it does it doesn't change. We didn't put any BCPs on where the where the, those dikes are or anything, so that it's open. If you want to go straight, we went around them because we're mapping slowly. But uh, and 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 after that, you, you kind of stay on the left and then go over the little mountain, so that uh, I think we picked the fastest uh, lines uh, for this race. Copy that. As Fish was saying, he thinks it's going to be super fast. I don't disagree. Uh, carrying speed in a straight line but remember there's tons of bumps make sure you go out and pre-run it before you uh just think you can go quick left turn at el chanero uh there are probably quite a few people uh spectating this area and pitting heads up that's going to take you up into some of the washes now you guys have the option jose g to choose a couple different ways to do this uh any particular reason why you chose this one and then turning up over the hill this way it was just smoother uh, and that's that's the way you know like it, it's faster because i've seen like you said i i watch all the tracks and see what the what the racers are doing so might as well throw in the fastest lines and see it if they if they do their homework and come up with a faster one now copy that that takes you back into some what i consider some of the prettiest washes in northern baja i really i really like the color schemes and the look here i suspect there's going to be quite a bit of bloom going on uh, I've been talking to quite a few friends that have been in Baja and the spring bloom is popping with all the rain. And uh, as you get into these washes here, the, the canyons will get, it'll get tighter and steeper, uh, but it has like this really amazing red tint to it. Uh, it lets you know you're in this specific area. Has it looked like there's much water running through there and through that little tight wash section as you, uh, as you get further up into this section, Ho Jose G up by race mile 55 and beyond. No, no. Uh, I think last year it was way, I mean, last year with all the rains we had la uh, uh, two years ago, when we started San Felipe last year, it was it was worse. I mean, it was all flat there. You couldn't even see the road. No, uh, uh, there's not a lot of uh, rain damage for this one in, in that area. Roger that. We'll keep trucking through these washes, fish headed north. We're headed towards Saldana or Laguna Salada. You can see race mile 80. Uh, starts to break out of those canyons. You get into a, a, a more of a flatter flow. It's interesting how the rocks change color there. They turn from a red to a gray. Uh, and then you'll cut across the, the front of, of these mountains now. Uh, careful, a couple tricky little sections in there. Uh, get through the BCPs. Is there still, uh, I didn't see the access there, but we're going past that pump station road, across the pump station road as is traditional. Yeah, you just passed it, just that you couldn't see it. There's there has to be a BCP exactly on the on the road crossing there. Got it. Okay. Yep. Uh take you back into some other washes and some side hills. It's gonna get into some fun little silt sections. I, this is one of those sections that can be really fun to just take, you know, when you're having an easy fun pre-run, just taking a look around, trying to figure out where the least biggest bump is, right? Every once in a while there's like a like there's a two foot ledge on one side and there's a six inch ledge on the other. And then a three foot ledge across the other side. It's really weird how it, how it changes up the, the different faces, but it's a fun place to pre-run as you're heading back around this mountain uh, into where you'll probably see a ton of pits about race mile 82, 83. Yeah. It's BFG pit one right there. Also <clears throat> right on the side of the road. You guys started this stunt work about maybe eight years ago, going around this mountain, Jose G had that, had that been used prior to that? It's a really cool, fun section, the way you guys have done it. Yeah, I think probably code uh, raced it uh, before. I, and we just do that because we make it easier for teams to go to pit and be close to the highway. It's, it's, it's fun also, but, but it, that's the whole purpose, just going out and make it easier. And it's a good, good uh, pit area. Yeah, you see there, BFG Pit 1 will be there. Uh, for those of you that are signing up or are part of the BFG Pit Support Group, uh, that is directly along <clears throat> Highway 5. Everybody, please be careful going on and off the highway. Um, there will be a ton of spectators in this area. Uh, that will bring you up to this small road. This is not the main road, but it's uh, it looks pretty straight as you leave the highway and start heading out for uh, Saldana. Uh, this section is going to come back and loop close to the race course once again. Uh, they're not super close, but you'll be able to see the dust from the other race cars as you're approaching BCP 35. 
making that right. This tricky little sand wash in here, man, it's, you can get yourself into like little crazy little nooks and crannies in there. If you're not paying attention closely. <laughs> and just for uh, reference, this blue line right here, this is where the motorcycles are going to go and start heading South. Correct. Jose. Yeah, that, that's correct. That's where we cut the, the motorcycles. We, and then, um, all the miles that we took off uh, north, we, we, we gave them back in, in the southern section. Well, they actually race exactly the same mileage, but this way we keep them safe from, from getting caught uh, from the trophy trucks. Yeah. And so uh, going, going north here. Yep. Yeah, so the motos are going to go on what you would call more of the traditional southbound lane going back down south. Yeah, yeah, correct. That's uh, it, it's super fast for them to, to get back. So they're actually it, they're avoiding a super slow section. Uh, the first part for the trucks uh, going north is going to be extremely fast, but then we slow them down uh, a lot uh, just before they they rejoin with the race course with the motorcycles. It, I'm looking for it's super rocky. That no matter what trophy truck you have, you're going to have to slow down. Copy. I'm looking forward to talking about that section as I don't know that we've raced over in some of those sections that you guys have marked. We have. We have? Okay. Yeah. This is the northbound. You're leaving, uh, well, you're headed for Laguna Salada here. If I'm not mistaken, I haven't seen the zoom out on it, but I don't think we've gotten there yet. Is that the road there at VCP 39? That's the Laguna yeah. Salada road coming out. Copy. Uh. It looks like it's been wet. I don't know when this picture is from, uh, but actually last year it looks actually, like it's not that old. Yeah, it says four yeah. two twenty three. That's pretty new for a satellite image uh, in Baja on here. Yep. Yeah. So not wet. It's fine. I just I just did it, and uh, it's just perfect with no dust, but it's not muddy anymore. Copy. Uh, that's gonna head you up through the the dry lake bed. Uh, look for obstacles along the way, and then you're gonna get on to some. Uh, as you come off the lake bed, there will be some uh, good little, well, used to be silty zones. I'm not a, expecting a lot of silt out there, but some good, fun little sections as you're headed to the north. Um, this is just starting to skirt the edge of the lake bed. Uh, correct, Jose G, as we, as we head to the north and, and start getting off to the side. Yeah, yeah, but you're you're pretty much on the, on the lake bed all the way until you turn left off it, so... It'll be fast. So continuing northbound, uh, that's going to get you to your apex of the race course. Now, this is a, a old pump station where we're going to make the turn back around, if I'm not correct. Is there uh, people living out there, Jose G? Um, there, there is one ranch there, and they are fencing a a uh, uh, a ranch or something. There's a, there's a new fence right there, so just when you're pre-running, uh, watch out for it. Uh, we went around it, but it's brand new. So uh, just if you're raising at night or something, keep your eyes open. And what's the what's the highest access point just for chase crews to know? Where's like the highest part of the course that they can actually come in on a access road? Well, I think they have to come in on on on, uh, on Laguna Salada Road uh, to to get to that point. Okay, basically over here on this road. No, that's, that's a cow. Oh, that's, okay. That's water, yeah. So if someone needs to get to their car up here, which way would they go to get there, you think? Uh, I think I think from Salada or, or Guadalupe Canyon Road will we'll take you that way. There's one access road, but uh, it was water running, and I don't think you can you can get across. So if, you, if you're trying to go from, from 5 to the race course all the way up uh, in that northern area, yeah, that the road that comes through the mountain there, you're saying has water running across it. Yeah, right before you get to the race course, there was water. Uh, maybe, maybe now I, I I just did it. I just did that one like three weeks ago. So it's a it's a it's a flip of a coin. You would have to check it out first. All right, right. don't break down up here. Yeah, yeah. Just don't break. <laughs> <laughs> easier said than done. <laughs> uh so that will bring you around the top of the race course uh what is the top race about 126 more or less if memory serves 127 125 yeah, 125 right here so yeah probably about 127 or so gotcha uh so obviously you know, there's some uh, zigzagging and moving around in there is this 
Uh, some of this course, uh, is this some of the race course that when we're returning back south that we use to race uh, towards the other summit coming in the back way about four years ago at the thousand? Uh, we used part of that, I think, on, on the Baja 500 back in, in, in the COVID days when we went all the way north. Okay. And there's, there's, there's also a section right there that we've never raced on so it's only a few miles of it but uh it's uh you'll see it it's all pretty much open and and new is that i i'm looking at some of this yeah i'm not i'm not sure that i've been on some of these parts of this race you, course you've been, on, you've been on some of it but then it turns left off a little trail that uh, that we found and uh it's it's all it's all new but it's it's gonna be super fast Copy. Super fast. Let's head down south. Uh, how Will we get close to Cajamuzo Junction or not really? Uh, not really. If uh, So right there, when you, if you go back a little bit to that and zoom there, if right there, that, that, that road takes you to Cajamuzo. But right. we, turn, we turn left uh, off that road and uh, just uh, won't hit Cajamuzo Junction for this race. Copy. Any fun names of any of these locations uh, to share with people? Well, uh, I know that hill down there, it's called uh, Capirote. But uh, no, no, uh, we can we can put the Gringo Hill on it if you want. But looks like a <laughs> dog. Doesn't that look like a boxer or something? <laughs> looks like a bull's head kind of on the left side with That's the weird. ears on the top. Yeah. The No Bull Canyon. And then it's it's cuddling its baby bull. Anyway, we carry on. Yeah. We spend too much time on Google Earth, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's going to keep us bringing southbound. It. When do we rejoin what you would call a race course that people have seen before? Okay, at that point, you're already on the race, uh, on, on, on a course that we've done probably two or three times maximum. And it takes you down to where there's a section where it's super rocky. Lots of boulders, and you have to cross. A, and when you get to it, when you get to the worst section, you can't even see. You'll see the arrows, but there's no road. It's just boulders uh, going across a wash. Um, you did it twice, I believe. You already did it twice. Copy. So that's bringing us southbound here uh, towards the wells at Saldana, if I'm not mistaken. You can see the yeah. VPs keeping you on the race course yeah. there. Uh, is that... That's that's by the wells somewhere in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the wells, well, the, the, the other wells down in Saldana are already are are when the motorcycle course joins with the with the, the with, with the with that race course, that's where the, the, the houses and the wells are. Gotcha. So coming back across here, we'll uh start heading southbound, and that's gonna start taking us towards uh, area not a lot of people have raced on uh, back down in this section the motorcycles will be going heading down past that uh, what we would call the pump station the trucks and four-wheel vehicles will be out here in this different zone yeah in that area make sure you have both spares with air because uh, there's going to be a lot of flats in that area between starting what section would you say is that I right mean, this whole zigzag that, here. where the cursor is right yeah. there until you you rejoin with a motorcycle course so like 170 or so yeah yeah it's bold it's rock after rock there it's pretty gnarly super fun that's going to bring us down alongside into this wash this is all a little bit different and we'll rejoin back i'm sorry following along is any of this on the uh telegraph road that comes out of the summit jose g or this is not yes yeah, you know it. That's huh? the name of it. Yeah. The Telegraph Road, right? It was a, a, originally a, a Telegraph Road that was built uh, for communications to come out of the San Felipe area um, back during or around World War II, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and, and, and I was asking that because I see the big zigzags lit, like kind yeah. of following uh, the route that they had plotted at one time uh, yeah. way back in the, I guess it would be in the 40s. Jeez, that's almost 100 years ago. Yeah. What class were you racing then, Cameron? 
<laughs> I was gonna ask that. <laughs> so funny. You guys are talking crap. Just keep it up. <laughs> Rattle you guys both to the ground at the same time. <laughs> um back across more washes, more interesting terrain. This is uh where many people are used to where you see that VCP 79 where the motorcycles have made the hard left. Uh, that is that the area that traverses that uh, little rocky crappy section that uh, we've used over the years. And we're going to, the four wheel vehicles yep, that's drop exactly into the wash. Yeah. That's the spot, true. right? Yep. Yeah. You can see uh, it's a super fun little rock zone. Then we're going to crank a right into this uh, big flowing wash area, not flowing, but you can see where the water has flown through there, uh, flowed through there. And that's going to take us to what sometimes I call the baby summit. Have you, have you ever, you know, where you go through that little rock crawl, a little narrow section. And uh, I know there's the summit, the mini summit, the baby summit over here. Uh, <laughs> crawls through that little rocky section, but a fun zone until you drop into these big washes. Uh, How's the, how do these big washes look? Does it look like the water's been in there, cleaned them off at all, or just looks like yeah, race court? It's all flat. Copy. Everybody watch out for hidden rocks. My suggestion to you. Uh, that's going to bring you down across these washes. The race courses will get real close again. We'll come around the side of this hill, uh, which for some reason always requires a lot of markers right there because it seems like it's in the past, it's always like a spot people can miss pretty easily for some reason as the course starts tapering out to the right. I think it's because um, if they get in these left lanes right here where they keep going straight, they'll just follow these, right? <laughs> it, it's pretty burned in. I mean, you, it, it'll be easy uh, to, to stay on the race course. Well, I'm also referencing pre-GPS days, right? You yeah. know, before and before everybody's pre-running eight laps of San Felipe. <laughs> just because everybody's a glut for punishment. Uh, that brings you across this uh, cross grain desert section. It's been been in play for a long time. I'm not sure exactly where you have it marked, but I'm sure it's on the best stuff or the most fun stuff. And you'll climb out of this wash. And we'll, are we going by what is a a relic of a 1970s or 80s military inspection up yeah. there on the hill? Yeah, 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 yeah. Up on on that uh, plateau up there, and then you go down and. And then you go out to Laguna Marga, like like we do all the time. Amarga, bad bad water. Amarga, Amarga, Agua Amarga. Yeah, because everyone knows that as, as Borrego, but that's not really Borrego. That's Laguna Marga. Well, Laguna Amarga. Translate Amarga for us. Uh, like sour or something like that. Yeah, gotcha. Um, there's a lot of interesting. I mean, there, there's. There's always like uh, there will there should be some water right there where, you, where before you cross the highway on on the right. That's why it's called Laguna Marga. There you go. Uh -huh. Bor Borrego Hill is actually the one in front of the main road going into Laguna del Diablo. Oh, the the Borrego Hill is the is the yeah. dark colored one next to the Ox Monument, above the Ox Monument. Yeah. For traditional. Speaking of the way people at the races call it, a lot of people call this the Borrego Road Crossing. Um, but as he says, Amarga, Agua Amarga? Laguna Amarga. Laguna Amarga. Uh, that's going to cross us into uh, some traditional race course. Plenty of whoops, plenty of washes, plenty of uh, things to pay attention to. As you race down, you'll make a right turn and start heading up towards uh, the highway. We will race alongside the highway. Uh, cautionary, please. Everybody that's on the highway, don't uh, film your cars as they're racing there. Do your driving and uh, don't spectate from a moving vehicle, please. Right? Keep it safe. Park and watch. Yeah, there's always a lot of spectators right there. This is a, this is actually a really dangerous section, so be, be sure you're definitely paying attention through this section. <laughs> yeah, you know, it always happens. We always say the, say the same thing, exactly what both of you just said, because you have chase teams filming i mean if you have the other people in your in your car filming it's fine but you have the driver looking at the race car and you're not paying attention there might be a car that stopped in front of you and we've, there's been some accidents on the highway that's the most dangerous spot uh, on on the whole race course the highway when you have uh, uh, the course so close to the to to the highway so just watch out for that yeah so everybody be smart Smart. This is the hill you're talking about, the Borrego Hill that you're talking about. 
Yeah, on the north part of the highway, yeah. Oh, on the north part of the highway. That one right there. That's where I go. Gotcha. So hard left turn, you will not get to the Valle de Sol Road, which is the, the bigger road that people are accustomed to. We're going to run down through a zigzaggy kind of wash and high side the wash as we go down and cross underneath the power lines, uh, somewhere probably near the power station. Um, and through what has been in the past, a, kind of a little bit of a zigzaggy, silty area. Now, are we going on to... Laguna Diablo on the on the eastern side. We're staying out of the middle, obviously. We're we're staying out of the middle, but we're not hugging the 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 main road. There's three ways you can go. We're pretty much we're going in the middle one. Copy. I I haven't been on Laguna Diablo in a little bit. Is it nice and muddy? Is it wet? What's the status? It's just a little bit moist. There's no there's no mud. There will be dust there, uh, so just uh, it's be careful, especially if you're if you're catching up to someone. I mean, remember you try to you try to stay away from the dust, and then you move out, and you don't know if there's spectators or or people there on the on the leg bit. So just just extremely careful careful when you're in the dust in that area. And also beware, there are some bush mounds uh, out there as well. So heads up. Yeah, you, you might can also... about that. Yeah, you might it might also have livestock making their way out to trying to find water. So just a heads up on all that. Uh, that's going to bring you down to the bottom here uh, where you're going to come alongside of the uh, where the road is. But then you're going to actually come back and junction out to the road. I see it there. It uh, uh, looks like VCP is uh, 101. Yep. Is that getting back on that traditional road, Jose G.? Yeah, you get back. We, you know, we call it Chinalito, and uh, you get back where there's there was also a military checkpoint there, yeah. and go south on the main road, and then we turn left to go uh, towards Morelia. It's a more lovely off-road race course. Now, there's been some talk. Uh, the The farms are back active out there again. I'm understanding. Is that is that true? The oh yeah, agriculture is working again. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of wet seasons. So you guys stay off of people's farmland. Uh, you know, chasers, beware. It might, if some people that have a lot of experience might be looking to go certain ways that may no longer be uh, accessible. So just heads up, be respectful of people's land, uh, their gates and their and their crops. Uh, this will bring us into what's known as Morelia Junction. Uh, we're going to junction into some of the uh, race course we've used in the past. It starts to narrow up. Uh, will we will be on a little bit of that graded road, but off to the side mostly, Jose G. Yeah, like always, we're gonna stay on the on the right side of the graded road, and then uh, right before you get to Morelia Junction, this is the first time that we put we actually made it a a, a speed zone for, for obvious reasons, just across Morelia Road, uh -huh. and then you're once you cross, you're on the everyone's favorite whoop section. Yee! <laughs> that's bfg pit too right there also so there's yep. gonna be a lot a lot of pits there right that's that's probably where everyone's gonna have a pit at yeah and that, that's why we made it a, a speed zone so that just to make it safe for everyone yeah and anybody sending pits out there we talked about a little bit earlier that morelia road is what as they call it or the zoo road or um it accesses uh by the storage units that's paved at first there's a couple sneaky corners on it by the way be very careful uh but when it turns to dirt, watch, just watch out in the dust. Don't do any crazy passing. Uh, there's a lot of traffic that heads out to this zone. So I can only caution you so much, but please be careful. Uh, after you cross the Morelia Junction, Morelia Road, as Jose G said, there's plenty of fun for the whole family. Uh, no matter what class you're racing, you will take your lickings in here. There will be plenty of pounding and uh, yeah, Cross grain. You can see how the washes are flowing across it. That's because the water's going from left to right or right to left towards the, the interior, and you're going to be racing right across all of it. Anything really surprising or all very traditional looking drops and ledges and sand whoops? Yeah, and there's there. Do you know where the gotchas are? It's just uh, we did we didn't put any danger marks on them because there's a few of them. So when uh, make sure when you're pre-running, if you don't know the area, especially. 
just watch out because they're backbreakers. Yeah, definitely watch out. If you haven't been in there, you got to definitely take a slow look before you get too confident. Uh, that's going to move us south. You'll see that we get alongside uh, the graded road there. I'm assuming that's a that's a big uh, make sure you all stay off the graded road. Right, Jose G? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a, a, an off limits road that we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll have a file uh, in a few days where, uh, like we always do, where you can't go. And if you happen to by mistake get on that road, well, you know what's going to happen. You're going to by mistake end up uh, getting disqualified. Right. <laughs> don't go on. Don't go on the easy road here. <laughs> no. Yeah. There's a reason why it's so easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in the days, that's the way we went. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who have been around, uh, well, how long ago did we start using this fun stuff? About 15 years ago. Probably more. Really? Wow. Yeah. I want to say more. Uh, yeah. This will take us to the bottom of the race course. It looks like about race mile 250, uh, VCP uh, 117. And that's going to take us up into, is this Chanate wash? Yeah, that, that's Chanate. And it's super flat. Uh, it's as fast as I've ever seen it. Uh, it's it's one of my favorite washes. It is, it is fun, right? It's like you can actually, all the washes, it seems like sometimes you're like, whoa, where, when did I get to the top point of it, right? But this one, you can kind of tell the difference how the wash changes from once from the east side to the west side, which way the water would flow. Some of the other washes further south, it's a little bit tougher to discern uh, where that, that summit is, so to speak. But uh, this, this is definitely a fun wash, beautiful wash, um, lots of good history in there. Um at least for my race team going out pre-running and having a great time out there and uh, getting to see that little bit, little slice of the washes just south of San Felipe. Yeah. So that was the, that for, for the vehicles, that's as further south as, as you're going to go. So uh, really the only main wash is going to be Shanate and it's the fastest one. It's all downhill and it's flat. And so it, it'll be super fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great part of the course. This will make our left turn and head back north. Do you want to? Uh, are we are on uh, the old Portacitas road? Or old Portacitas? What am I? What am I trying to say? The person who the the pole line road. It is old Portacitos, and it's just been graded. So once you make to the to the to the pump station, it's uh, for a few miles. It's all graded road until you pass the. You go a little bit north of the of the airport, and you turn right, and then left on the, on the sandy roads. That'll take you back to the finish line, and back to intersecting uh, where the motorcycle course will be. So right. you prepare everybody uh, after you make that that high speed or the pole line road. So oh, actually, it merges back in here, comes back together here. This is where the motorcycles are going to go south. So they're going to oh, make south, right, right here. Yeah, this is where we add those uh, like eighty miles. So that they raise the same exact the same mileage, but now we slow down the bikes, so that uh, we're we're pretty much, we're pretty sure that the first bike's gonna get to the finish line when the le after the last vehicle had already started. Can you show me that again, Fish, so we can see how they how the bikes go outbound? Yeah, so they're gonna be on the course coming through here, and then they're gonna make a hard right. Hard right. right. Yep. Yeah, it's like it's like a U turn right before the pump station there. And it takes you down to Watamote Wash, and they they come back on a Sufre Wash. So Say that last wash. Go do a bunch I've of been washes. saying it wrong forever. Go ahead. How, how do you say that last wash? You said a Sufre. A Sufre. Okay, I'm pretty close. Yeah, so that one's Watamote, and then it it takes you to a Sufre, and then uh, you come back paralleling the other the other road, but closer to the highway. So it's um, it'll be interesting. So the bikes will will do quite a bit uh, more southern washes or south end with a couple little curveballs there at the end, a couple little changes. Uh, it looks pretty interesting the way you've routed it. Um, but some stuff we have seen in the cars before also. Yeah, we, we did, the, like you said, we did some some different trails and things like that just to match up with the mileage so that uh, it was, you know, they the top teams want to get the want to win the overall so we have to make sure that they run the same mileage and like we all like we said we slow down the vehicles up north 
So now he, down south, we slow down the motorcycles. So we make it, we made it like really even. Yeah. And I would like to a word of caution to the moto riders when you guys are pre-running or when you're coming up on those graded roads, you know, sometimes the truck and car teams and chase teams don't have the motorcycle course loaded into the uh, their GPSs. They may not always know exactly where those road crossings are, especially in this area right here where there's a there's a, a couple of different roads that can go across there, whether they're big or small. So my suggestion is just, you know, be real cautious at those road crossings, moto guys and chase guys, uh, just paying attention to what's going on out there. The Persibu Road, I'm sure we'll have someone uh, marking it, which is, is that where it all comes back together? Is that on the Persibu Road? Right here. Yeah. It's it's north of uh, of Persibu where it comes back. That's that's like the, uh, the I think oh, there's an the airport. Like asphalt, yeah, that's like north of the, the airport. Roger. And the courses come back together here as we talked about. Uh, this was a this was some fun stuff uh, last year, zigzagging around out there. Something there different. Was some, uh, there was a little bit of drama last year, right here, right with some silt. Is that going to be? Uh, is that the same section, or is that any better this year? Anything, Jose? What do you mean better? Yeah. <laughs> or worse? <laughs> is it the it, same? I guess it, the same section. It, it was already silty when we marked it, so I can only imagine on race day. So we don't make it that easy. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> That'll be the siltiest part of the whole race course. Yeah, basically right here, right? Between BCP yeah. 126 and 128. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. What uh what part, you know, when we start talking about coming in here where the spectators are, uh, we're gonna go on the outskirts of where they had cut that golf course originally. Is that right? Well, never uh, uh same same route inbound as last year. Correct. Plenty of silt, plenty of fun, lots of spectators. Everybody, heads up. Uh, that'll bring you back towards town, looking at VCP one thirty, the around the hill, back to where it merges. Remember, do not pre-run the inbound. Right here is where your pre-run oh, ends. Go, go right and go out to the highway. Correct. So uh, that that is never open for inbound. Correct, Jose G. That that is correct. And that'll take you back on to the outbound race course inbound where we go underneath the highway across the bottom of the sand dune and back onto the Malacon speed zone, a uh, couple speed zones in there. We're going to start the speed zone, same place it ended going back in Jose G. Yeah. You, once you start the speed zone, it spits on all the way to the finish line. So uh, right in front of the Bahamar restaurant, that's where timing is going to uh, pretty much that's where your, your race is going to end. And then you just cruise on to the, 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 the platform there to get uh, interviewed, but the, your time is already done. So just speed zone all the way to get the, to get your beer there at the finish line. Yee! <laughs> right yeah. along, right along the, uh, the water. Pretty, pretty picturesque, hard to beat. I mean, not a lot of places. I know La Paz has a very similar setup uh, for the start and finish the uh, start of the race this last year, by the way, Jose G uh, the Baja 1000 didn't go uh, well for us. Well, it did great until mile 214. But I, I, wanted to say, I thought it was a spectacular effort. I thought it was a wonderful race course. Um, I thought it was cool to have it go in reverse. It was a lot of fun to, for everybody to do something different. I know a big task for some people, but I just wanted to say hats off to, to score and to your efforts for coming up with something a, a, little, a lot different and uh, so fun for everybody to see the bottom part of the race course in the daylight. Yeah, it was... It was unreal, right? How many people took, like even for the motorcycles, usually in Ensenada, I mean, there's only a few that uh, wake up early to see the start. I mean, in La Paz, it was like fear the walking dead. It, it was <laughs> packed with people. It was it was amazing and super respectful. I mean, I, I was at first kind of nervous that, the, that we were going to start the bikes and thousands of spectators were already there with their ice chest and beer in hand. It was already like almost one in the morning. And uh, they didn't go to sleep. They 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 waited there. They 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 partied, but they were super respectful. And they, they you don't move. Everyone moved. We started the bikes, and they moved. It was like a hundred miles of just spectators and spectators and spectators. Fire pits, fire pits. It was it was unreal. I mean, it was to me it was it was epic. It was great. 
it was uh i gotta tell you out of all my years of racing anything uh any race series but racing score specifically since that's the big dog and where we get to race along the ocean when we got down there around race mile 55 uh just below conejo but below marquez and the people were camping we went out pre-running just a couple days before and it was already packed with campers and it was just I would say that was probably one of the most, you know, it's not as emotional going northbound as when you're coming southbound because, you know, usually this light's coming up and we're racing for the finish line. But the vision of the fans being so stoked and so respectful, what I mean, the fans were incredible and uh, very respectful. And they weren't even like right on top of the race course. They were, but they weren't, if you know what I mean. And I just it was a great experience. And the people of La Paz really uh, opened up the, the doors for all the racers very well. It was it was spectacular. Yeah. It, it it was spectacular. And like you said, there was a big effort going down there. But you have to plan to go down there anyway, because you, you, you will plan on that we're, that we're going to finish. So inverting it, when you finish, you're pretty much you were home. You were all you're, you're only a couple hours away from for most of the people. Uh, uh, you were here, so you didn't have to deal with driving back uh 1500 kilometers with no place to sleep uh, and i don't know I, I think it's logistically it worked better this way so Our are finish you going to do it again that's what people want to know you see yeah awesome <laughs> all right hopefully it's during my career i'll be i'll be around for a few more years so i'm uh, excited about getting a chance to do that again that was a lot of fun but Anytime you can throw us a little bit of a curveball, something different, it's it's definitely greatly appreciated. Thank you, Jose G, and your whole team, Thanks. and the BFG team, and Nate at Jackson, and everybody that gets behind that. It's awesome. I, I think you should have thrown the mini summit in for San Felipe again, but the fact you didn't do it here, we have hope it's still coming this year at some point. A hundred percent, it'll it'll be there for one of the races. Oh, there All we right. go. Well, I was looking forward to it at the Baja One Thousand because I I had heard some talk. Uh, about how you were disappointed you didn't you weren't able to use it at San Felipe and maybe later in the race it would come in I was like yes let's do it let's do it but it didn't happen so uh you know it's a it's definitely a, a area to be reckoned with uh, one of those legendary names for sure but uh we'll see if it gets onto one of the race courses a hundred percent you'll see it this year perfect oh boy careful what you wait for. <laughs> Uh, everybody be safe. You know, off-road racing is a lot of fun. It seems really wide open. Just pay attention. Other people are around Jose G any closing messages for anybody, uh, sign up stuff, safety stuff. How about, I have a question where, where is the primary medical location in San Felipe nowadays? If someone has an injury or if there's an emergency, where, where do people look to go to and how do people, uh, work on the communications for that? Okay. Uh, Baja medical clinic, uh, they already, they're working on, on being open 24 hours a day. And uh, we have uh, our, our staff is on race day. We even have our staff there at the Baja Medical Clinic right in front of El Dorado main entrance. Uh, well, one of the, 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 next to the, the big gas station. And hopefully you don't, you, you don't have to use it, but it's good to know that that's the main uh, medical facility that we're going to be using. Okay. That's good information. Any other questions, thoughts, or comments that we got from the peanut gallery fish? Uh, there was some people there. There was like a big uh, drive for uh, for dog food going on for all the racers this year. I put up one post about it earlier. Uh, they're asking some of the um, rescues down there, asking if everybody can bring a bag of dog food. I know you're a dog fan, Cameron. So they uh, bring a bag of dog food. I'll post up on my story some of the drop-off locations. Uh, one of them was the Legacy. The Chenoweth Lodge was one of them. There's a couple more. So if everybody could bring a bag of dog food down there, it would help out for uh, some of the rescue operations going on down there in San Felipe. For sure. There's a lot of stray dogs in San Felipe. So if yeah, the rest they, of... they can also drop down at the score ops, uh, a, a few of in and out burgers on race day. So perfect. We'll did appreciate it. Did you say a few in and out burgers? In-N-Out burgers. Day? Yeah. <laughs> when is the first in and out coming to Mexico? <laughs> uh, hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Anything else on your mind, Jose G you want to share anything we should ask about? No, like, like I said, just a, uh, on my end, San Felipe is definitely one of the most popular races right now. It's unbelievable how many uh, like level one vehicles we have entered so far. And that's like you said, it's the shortest race of the year, but it brings the most spectators out of all the races we have. So just super careful pre-running and definitely on race day. 
you, we've all seen it. People are in front of, they're on the race course. They move when the vehicle is passing. It's super scary. <laughs> you, you, so for us, I mean, we, we kind of get used to it and we were hoping that they're going to move, but really, really be careful, especially in the lake beds, in the dust. And I mean, just if you're passing or when you're passing, just be super careful. Just keep in mind that there's families and spectators everywhere. So that's that, that's my biggest fear. It's my favorite race, but it's the one that I fear the most because all the the thousands of spectators that are out there. Yeah, yeah. One one other safety point that's been brought up recently is if you guys see a stopped race vehicle <clears throat> on the course, jump on the Weatherman channel and call it in. Just call in where it is. You know, if you don't know what's going on with it, at least call it in on the radio. Um, you know, just keep everybody posted in the middle. In in some of these spots, like we saw on the course, there's not a real good access into there, right? So if you see a car there. They might be there for a while. So at least call it in so somebody knows that there's a race car stopped at that race mile and someone can get in there and check on them. Yes. On, on that subject, uh, you know, with, with, our, with our tracking uh, devices, if we if we detect that a vehicle stopped, like, like I mean, you know, when it, you know, when they slowly come to a stop or when it's something like really drastic, uh, we, we immediately text them if they're okay. If they don't answer, we send a helicopter, we send or we send our rescue units and, until we know that they're okay. Usually, if they stop really fast, if if they stop really fast and they're not answering, it's probably a problem. So we don't wait and we 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 send help. All right, Roger. Good to know. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it, Fish. Did we do it? Did we cover the course? So we talked about it. The yeah. Motos, the different lines, and. All that stuff. There's no sportsman shortcut for any other class. You know what? We we actually missed it, and it wasn't on the map. If uh, right when you turn the motorcycles up north, when you turn, uh, uh, if you if you can go up back on the map, we'll just go over it very briefly, and uh, I can explain it because it was we didn't use it on this one. Okay, go go to to Saldana, uh, to the where the where the motorcycles uh, split up, and uh, I'll explain. Only only class 11s, seven S's. Okay, right there at the. Okay, if if you look on the left on the on the, on the normal course, I uh, go to the BCP. Uh, zoom in on on on, on the, well, on the on the normal course, not the motorcycle ones. Go left. Left or right. Go left so you can see that that like the mm, there you go. What's the what's that BCP right there? Sixty seven right here. Okay, exactly there from from BCP sixty seven. You you cut over to the the other BCP. Uh, Thirty six. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so they just go they go straight across right there. Oh, yeah, you see this, this one there? right here? No, no, not that one. That's what, that's what class eleven seven all the sportmen vehicles not no motorcycles sportman vehicles will, will will take that road it only takes in mileage wise it's only only going to take him like a mile and a half uh off their the the the, the actual mileage but it's that we're saving them a brutal section down there with all the rocks and everything so we're saving their lives just cutting from from that bcp to the other one that's okay, the so only shortcut they have it's not a lot of miles we only have 285 Point six miles total, so they can they can finish in thirteen hours. <laughs> right. They're going straight across there. That's a sportsman shortcut. Cody, my my navigator Cody was telling me connects to uh, connect to thirty seven. No, it's sorry. probably this road, right? Yeah, <clears throat> there is a road right there. If you look, you can see it on there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, well, got, I think I filed on the website. I just didn't load that one from the website. I forgot about it. It yeah. is on the website though. There's a file with that road. So and it's marked, it has signs and everything. So perfect. Okay. Uh okay. So that people figure that part out on your own. Make sure you have the right road and the right way to junction off of there. Correct, those AG? Yeah, it's very well marked, and we do have GPS files for it, so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, awesome. All right. Austin, how you doing, buddy? We good? Good. Yeah, I think we covered uh, we covered the course. We got the uh, qualifying, how it's going to work this year. That was a big thing to talk about. And any uh, yeah. big any big news out there, fish that you want to share? Anything you want to spill the beans on? Nope. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. All right. Status quo. Any new? Uh, anything else? Nothing. We got nothing. 
You got anything, Jose G? No, it was easy. That's yeah. good. Easy really peasy. Forward to this one. But we're they're doing live streaming. They're doing live streaming of qualifying. I'm I'm going down there to help them with that. So we're we're live streaming qualifying again, and uh, we're gonna have live timing for that. I'm told. So that'll be uh that'll be good. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Jose G, for all the effort. Thank you, Score International. Uh, racers, fans, spectators, media, everybody be safe, be smart. If you think it's a bad idea, it probably is. Fish, thank you for this opportunity for everybody to be able to uh, talk story and shop and uh, talk a little San Felipe. Oh, check this out. Who's this guy? <laughs> Mini Abdali. Oh, very cool. Very <laughs> cool. And then there, there's one more. They came to visit, so. Oh, very cool. I say hi. Oh. <laughs> future racers oh, abdal is already a racer so madison is gonna race also so very cool keep it in the family that's how my parents did it all right that's gonna do it for this episode of fish gistics your score san felipe 250 uh preview show uh if you have any questions feel free to message fish gistics uh, message score and uh, they'll try to answer them for you uh, read your driver's briefings because that has a lot of information in it and everybody be safe and enjoy uh, the kickoff to the 2024 score international series uh, we'll see you all in san felipe or on the live stream see you guys thank you